approach uh, that they saw something about the Nordic uh, way of life that seems to be making people content. So what we did, for instance, with uh, the World Happiness Report was tone it down. We did we did talk about it, but but not in a, such a big way. And uh, then we have, of course started to talk about uh, what what will work now. You know what can we say besides you know the practical information around uh, around opening times and borders and, and Corona etc. Um, while still being sensitive to, to the to the situation. And another challenge was that uh, humor, which we've used a lot, especially on, on Twitter, uh, didn't really you know, seem appropriate either, coming from us at least. Um, so uh, in, a, in, a, in a way, the challenge has been to, it feels a bit like we've uh, lost some of our personality uh, because you, know, you don't want to be seeming um, insensitive to the situation. But, uh, but it's easy to then sort of tip over to the just being really dry and boring. So that's kind of where we're, you know, still trying to learn and, and struggle and at least try and bring something sort of more lighthearted to the, to the situation. But still, because we always need to be credible. Um, another thing that we noticed uh, quite quickly was that uh, the situation now has a lot of potential to polarize and divide people. Uh, there's a lot of talk about, you know, who's the best? Is, is you know, is Sweden doing the, the best, uh, you know, actions? And is Finland's Corona strategy better? And you know, how many people have died and here and how many there? And comparing and like it was the World Championships in, in you know, Corona strategy. And uh, in diplomacy, of course. Uh, we want to do the opposite. We want to build bridges between nations. And in this case, Finland and Sweden, we want to, to cherish our relationship, build it, uh, you know, uh, make it grow. And, uh, and we, we would never want to, you know, engage in a competition like that of any kind. Um, instead, you know, we want to uh, show solidarity and try and make people sort of understand that this is a global, global issue that we're all in the same boat. Um, and we could also quickly see that even, you know, solid relationships like Finland and Sweden, we go back, you know, so many hundred years, uh, still quite quickly you could see some, uh, um, some problems even in those relationships. Um, so we are thinking that we should make more content and even actions to highlight, highlight the unique relationship that we have. Um, just to show you a few examples of uh, some headlines. Uh, when the, the northern border was closed, uh, not for all traffic, but almost, um, that the Swedish politicians, um, so, some Swedish local politicians up in the north, started talking about uh, that this could have, you know, very uh, serious consequences to the relationship between our countries. You don't usually hear language like that between Finland and Sweden. Um, and even uh, Duggan's New Head, they're one of the big uh, dailies here. Uh, they wrote, I don't know how your Swedish is, uh, but I'll, I'll translate a little bit for you. Nationalism is already uh, a danger to the society is the, the uh, headline here. And uh, they are talking about the closed borders as a, you know, as a threat. And uh, Finland was also mentioned in this article. So we want to, uh, you know, counteract these kinds of thoughts. Um, also, disinformation uh, is something that's spreading really, really quickly now uh, in all shapes and forms, sometimes sort of intentional from uh, a certain, certain senders, sometimes more myths and rumors and sort of old perceptions and stereotypes that people use in these situations with, which are really not, not helpful. Um, and which we then, you know, want to counter with, with facts. Um, um, and then uh, there's a question of, you know, which subjects could we then talk about that sort of would feel you know, safe in this situation, uh, not upset, uh, or not risk, uh, you know, causing a backlash. Um, and for us, the themes that are still 
relevant. There's still quite a few, actually, uh, when we th think about a normal situation that we had in the beginning. Many of those themes still work today. Equality, of course. Uh, innovation, very important in the, uh, the corona age. Um, and so, uh, sort of neutral information on Finnish society and the Finnish way of life that we uh, always sort of want to educate people and talk about. Um, so I want to show you a few examples that we've done. Um, social media videos. This is one that we did on uh, innovation. The Finnish uh, uh, Oura ring. Um, they have a, a study going on with an American university um, in order to see if the ring could uh, detect signs of infection. So these are just this sort of short uh, social media videos that we started doing this year. Another uh, video on sort of more equality theme um, on Johannes Rampanen, the Finnish uh, photographer, and the book that he did uh, about his family, uh, specifically his daughter Lilia, was just chosen as the the photo photo book of the year actually. In in, in the, oh, let's see where my my mouse is there. So just highlighting, you know, different aspects of Finnish society, different kinds of people, people that are doing extraordinary things. We always communicate mostly in Swedish, uh, in Sweden. Um, sometimes on Facebook a little bit uh, in Finnish as well. And then um, trying to bring just a little bit of a lighter touch also. We did five facts on toilet paper. Quite early on when, when a lot of people were, were buying a lot of toilet paper. You see Americans use a lot of more, a lot more toilet paper than Europeans. Um, and then um, we come to a little sort of learning. We did a, a little social media video like this on uh, the Finnish stockpiles, the uh, the warehouses where uh, there's food and, and uh, oil and, and uh, sort of other the, the safety um, equipment that is needed. Um, and for us, it was just a uh, one of those sort of regular information uh, uh, posts that we do to, because, you know, this is quite specific for Finland to have stockpiles like these. Uh, and it was interesting to talk about, we thought. Um, and this video, um, I'll show it to you. It's, it's quite neutral.
yeah so it's more it's, it's an informative little uh, little uh, clip on on, on the, that subject but we quickly noticed that it went viral and uh, it was used in the sort of discussion um, on Sweden not having uh, a similar stockpile to, to use in this, this crisis, which was, of course, not our intention. Uh, you know, we, we didn't publish it to, to uh, you know, to be uh, some kind of a, a line in the uh, discussion or, uh, you know, try to uh, try to be against somebody it was just for information. But in this polarized situation, Almost, you know, anything can can be used to to uh, uh, support a point of view of, of any kind. Uh, so, both Sweden and, and Finland have been used in in the global discussion. Sweden, especially globally, and uh, in Finland also a lot. And here in Sweden, Finland has been used to to make a point. Um, and of course, we can we can never control that. We we can never know. What people do with the with the things that we publish and put out, we can we can make sure that they're they're correct, and and then of course we you know always have to be sensitive on the on the surroundings on the on the um, surrounding uh, media climate and the debates that are going on, so that we don't you know accidentally um, flare up something that we wouldn't want to. Um, so here's here's a project, a campaign that we've been doing um, during this uh, Corona crisis. Uh, it's called Insta Ambassadors, um, and um, the the idea is to have uh, you know more or less well-known uh, Swedes or Finns living here in uh, Sweden um, who have a relationship uh, to 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 Finland and uh, take over our Instagram account uh, and, um, for a week. And they make personal posts about you know, their relationship to, to Finland and their thoughts about it and their thoughts about the, the two countries. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it's worked really well during the, uh, the crisis also. Uh, uh, and, and goes to, uh, to the... Uh, goal that we have of uh, strengthening our relationship and actually you know showing that that we go uh, our history together goes back so many years and, and and it will continue as well so this project has been quite nice uh, for us uh, Siri Fagerud uh, was the woman here uh, she just took over our account yesterday uh, so she she will be posting during this week um, do go over there and see what she's doing. She's lovely. Um, and then um, before her, we had uh, David Lager Klantz, who's a Swedish author. Uh, you may know him from the Millennium books. Um, and um, he also wrote the uh, Slatan autobiography. He's very, very well known. Has a, a summer place in, um, in Finland and uh, his family uh, from his mom's side is, is from there. Well, Siri is a Swedish-speaking Finn who is now based here. So that's Insta Ambassadors project. Um, also, we've noticed that there's a huge need for some positive news, just some, you know, fun and a little bit of normality because everything is so unnormal right now. Um, so whenever we, you know, put out something sort of lighter and maybe, you know, fun or or even just good news uh there's a lot of response uh just here in the in the lower right corner there's a little tweet uh not even with a picture or anything and still got almost 200 likes on uh, the baltic sea uh where the water quality has gotten better um so people people got really really uh positively surprised by that uh, and also, yeah, we see uh, Sanna Marin's Vogue interview there. Uh, I was surprised that she got less likes on Twitter than the, the Baltic Sea uh, water quality. Usually, Sanna Marin gets lots of likes on the embassy websites, on the, on the social media. Um, there's one more video, just sort of uh, an example of the, the content that we're doing uh, on uh, the Finnish society and uh, 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 some sort of um, 
should I say, cultural, um, specific, uh, specifically Finnish cultural things that we, we have. This is on the one on Easter. Oh, let's see what happened. Let's try again. Here we go. It's also very popular on, on Facebook and Instagram. Teaching the, the Swedes a little bit of Finnish as well. A little prominent. So, um, before uh, we look at the words, I think that's, I think I'm just going to look, yeah, let's uh, look at the words. If you, if you come up with some, uh, some words to um, describe Finland and Sweden right now, we're going to look at them pretty soon. Um, but first, I have another challenge for you. Um, if you have an idea even now or, or later on how Finland could help sort of build global solidarity in this in this situation. Uh, I'd love to hear that. You know, it could be a social media campaign or you know profiles that are inspiring coming from Finland, uh, people who have uh, interesting solutions or uh, interesting take on on uh, or analysis on the situation right now. Um, Think about those as well and and do share if you if you come up with something i'll put my email there as well if you want to email me it's also on the on the embassy website the stockholm embassy but so now time to look at your words if you see um, if you have them um, how do you see finland and sweden right now you can either raise your hand or you can write in the chat and Lily will, will let me know if there's anything. How's it looking, Lily? Uh, currently, I think people are still contemplating. Uh, still we, contemplating? No, yes, not, uh, no, no um, answers yet. No contributions so far? No. That's okay. Uh, we can come back to them later as well if you have any, any ideas. So, um, Instead, uh, we can do a sort of my take on my take on this, um, how Finland is perceived in Sweden um, right now. My feeling is that that uh, our image here is pretty pretty intact. Uh, it hasn't uh, gotten more negative, uh, even more maybe slightly positive, given that many Swedes see that Finland has been you know well prepared for this this crisis. Especially, I think it must be because the uh, the stockpiles got such uh, a lot of media attention, um, and also a lot of Swedes don't agree with the Swedish uh, strategy of uh, you know not closing schools, not closing restaurants, and they look at Finland and see that uh, they be doing things differently. And so, kind of depending on on what you think, uh, that will form your opinion on on Finland as well. But, but as I said, my, my sense is that uh, uh, we've been doing pretty well during this crisis. Um, uh, Sweden, uh, both globally and in Finland, then is, is another matter, more complicated uh, question, as I'm sure you, you know, uh, given that um, there's been a lot of reporting on the Swedish uh, approach, both in Finland and in uh, global, global media. Um, Reputation wise, I mean, I'm not, you know, one to assess uh, medically how the, how the strategy is working or will, will work, but reputation wise, it's, it's, it's a high risk strategy. Uh, a Swedish Institute, which uh, um, analyzes and, uh, uh, you know, keeps track on uh, 
Sweden's uh, image and how what is reported uh, about Sweden in, in uh, different countries. I've seen that there's been an unprecedented interest in, in Sweden during this crisis, uh, which is of course because Sweden has chosen uh, another route uh, compared to many countries. Um, it, it's maybe not as different as is you know uh, sometimes portrayed or as it might seem. I mean, Swedes are uh, in many ways also uh, following the restrictions that other countries have put on place. It's just not been sort of uh, legal restrictions. It's been more recommendations. But while in Sweden, Swedes think that they're lagom, you know, not too much, not, not too little, um, they uh, are actually rather extreme. The World Values Survey uh, shows that. Um, for instance, Sweden is the, the country where people value the uh, freedom of the in individual more than in any other country. Uh, also, uh, very sort of not, not religious compared to many other countries. Uh, instead, people trust in, in science and uh, also trust their authorities a lot. Um, so, so it's not not surprising that uh, the Swedish Institute has seen that that in the international coverage, uh, Sweden has been seen as this sort of country that uh, goes its own route, which it has has done in in uh, many ways before in history. So it's sort of in line with that image. Um, but there's been a lot of um, how should I say, uh, maybe exaggerations, for instance, that, that, that Sweden is doing its business as usual uh, and nothing has changed, especially in the beginning, those reports were, were quite common. And Sweden has tried to, to sort of nuance the discussion, even the, the foreign, uh, foreign minister, Ann Linde, uh, quite early on uh, gave a press conference where she tried to uh, to answer the criticism and uh, also sort of um, give a more truthful uh, picture of the situation over here. Uh, but of course, you know, as in country branding, always you can't control what's being said. Um, and regarding the reputation, it's uh, it's depending on whether this will be a success or a, or a failure, in my opinion. Uh, you know, we, we uh, time will tell, we still can't know. Um, and maybe, you know, in a year, we won't even know what was a success and failure, who knows. But, you know, of course, if it would be a failure, uh, then Sweden would have much less credibility to talk about issues like this uh, and vice versa. If it is a big success, uh, then they can, you know, make their voice heard in the, in the international arena with, a, you know, a lot of, Pondus, if they say in Sweden, credibility and strength. So we'll see what, what happens, but definitely Sweden in the, in the sort of global eye right now. Um, so in the end, um, also looking forward, a uh, very interesting time uh, for communicators of all kind and marketers, also for us here at the embassy. Uh, the virus won't be going anywhere soon. Um, you know, we might uh, get back to a little bit of more normality soon, but we will still be living with it. For instance, we we don't know when we can have our normal uh, events, our receptions and, and meetings, etc. Uh, and um, we don't know if we could, you know, the Finnish Institute, for instance, here in Stockholm, also they they normally have uh, exhibitions and concerts and readings and things like that, which they haven't been able to do now. But we still want to meet and interact with each other as people, of course. Uh, and we have to come up with new ways of doing that. Um, so we, uh, we will be thinking of creative digital or other solutions of you know, bringing Finland here to Sweden, even though Swedes maybe can't travel there right now, but how could they experience you know, our, our country or, you know, uh, the Finnish culture uh, in some other way. Uh, 
uh, there's lots of ways. And now that we're getting back to maybe, you know, not so much crisis communication mode, we'll have more time to think about that as well. And also, you know, we want to contribute to the, to the solution uh, on this. Uh, you know, we can't contribute so much to the medical solution, but the, you know, global uh, solidarity and, and uh, you know, seeing uh, ourselves as a, you know, Nordic family, global family. Um, so, summing up, um, in a polarized situation like this, um, lots of information, lots of opinions going around and, and people can sort of use you for their own purposes. Um, we can't do much about that, but we can always see to it that we are, you know, sticking with the facts and we're sticking, you know, true to our values and ourselves and, and trying to see the big picture and not get, you know, um, involved in all kinds of uh, rows or discussions and just, you know, keep calm and keep going. Um, let's see what we more have. Let's not go to thank yous yet. Let's see, let's see if we have any, any sort of questions from you guys or just comments or, or ideas. Yeah, so I think the best would be to leave uh, these at the chat. So feel free to now comment or share questions or, or any ideas or thoughts on the presentation at the chat panel. So far I have only, I see only thank yous and how this was a very interesting and insightful for, for presentation. So not yet questions, but positive feedback and really pe people seem to be very grateful. Uh, it's lovely to hear that. I mean, yeah, always yeah. when you're talking like this, you're sort of, uh, you know, it would be much nicer to have you guys uh, here <laughs> in the room. <laughs> but it's good to get some reactions through the chat. Yes. And if you, yeah, if you share something, please share with all, pan uh, with, uh, all panelists and attendees. So if you share to only all panelists, then we are the ones seeing. If you want to see, uh, share your comment that everybody sees. There's another, thanks. Nice. I think it was really, ins okay, there is a question. From, mm -hmm. uh, do you think traveling locally in Sweden and exploring local culture will increase because of this situation? Since people cannot travel abroad. Mm. Yeah, yeah, do yeah, I would think so. Traveling will increase because of Corona. Practically, that's the question. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would guess that that it will grow uh, in Finland and and in Sweden in, inside the country. Um, given that, uh, my feeling is that the further you are from home and your healthcare and your your family and the, the things that you feel are safe, uh, the more insecure you'll feel about those things, and not and they're a big concern right now. So. Uh, my guess is that a lot of people will feel the safest in their own country, but then going forward a little bit, and when when you know the things settle down a little, I would guess that uh, also Nordic travel will will increase. Mm. Uh, Swedes coming to to Finland, for instance. My my guess is that 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 interest will grow, and uh, I've heard sort of signals like that from the, the city of Helsinki, for instance, that that people are showing interest. And there was a lot of interest before Corona uh, in Helsinki and the cultural offerings of Helsinki. Um, so I'm hoping we can, we can get back to that uh, fairly soon. Nice, we have actually a really good question here um, from Tyra. I hope I pronounced your name right. Uh, so she says, excellent presentation. Thank you for sharing. I have one question. Do you branch out using different social media platforms like TikTok? Mm. So, are you yeah, that's uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. We have uh, currently, we, we have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram uh, at the, the Stockholm Embassy. I'm not sure if the other, other embassies have other channels. I think maybe somebody has LinkedIn as well. Uh, I'd be very interested in, in uh, TikTok because uh, one of our main and most important target groups is young people uh, and of course they're on, on TikTok. Um, the question is what will we do there? I mean my kids are on, on TikTok a lot and all they do is dance videos. <laughs> 
and uh, I don't know if the embassy uh, staff dancing is, is what people want to see. But of course, you can do other, other types of content there. Uh, Washington Post has a, has a really nice uh, TikTok um, where they, uh, it's a bit like Instagram stories maybe, uh, but planned really nicely. And so maybe we could do something like that. The question is always, if you start, uh, if you establish a presence in a channel like that, then you have to also be there constantly and uh, do a lot of content. So you get the sort of, you know, build an audience. And so it's sort of a question of, uh, you know, how much staff do we have and do we have the resources to do that? But in principle, I would find that really interesting. Do we have more, more questions or? Sorry, I was on mute and I was reading. I apologize. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm still learning. This is so funny. Sorry. So we have a really good question. Uh, uh, another one. So uh, do you take in account corporate local brands in abroad when you want to give general message to public? How is re the relation between embassy and corporate brand in country brand management generally? Uh, do you mean like do we work with companies? Um, I guess and I would think that's probably the question like bigger like yeah. local corporate brands. Yes. Uh, the, yeah. The, yeah we work uh, yeah a lot we, we work a lot with companies We're very interested in, in that. Uh, Finnish, Finnish companies mm. uh, of course mostly because part of our work at the embassy also uh, within the the team Finland uh, under that umbrella. Uh, we have Business Finland, uh, the Finnish uh, Cultural Institute here and the, the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and so um, one of our jobs is to promote um, uh, exports from Finland to Sweden. So yeah, we've, we've had different kinds of uh, events where we, you know, we could uh, serve Finnish food or we could have a you know, seminars uh, for for Swedish uh, for Finnish companies wanting to come to the Swedish market, or you know, uh, sometimes uh, companies have have events where they could meet potential clients in in our premises, or, or we could help them, uh, you know, find people to invite. Uh, for instance, we've done an event with the the Habitar uh, Fair. Uh, where we, uh, you know, in co collaboration with them and the, the institutes invite sort of local uh, design design people to come on uh, and hear about the Finnish design companies and, and the Finnish design scene. So yeah, that's uh, that's very much of interest for us. Mm, nice. Then I have another question. Um... Oh, um, the, the poster is reflecting on your answer and saying that Nordic countries always make, always make the earth cooler. Thank you, Finland and Sweden, and greetings. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks for sharing. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of uh, good, cool brands in Finland that I would love to see more in Sweden. Uh, mm. But of course, coming here is always a, a big investment. Uh, you have to have a you know a good marketing plan and you, you know for instance if it's a food product that you're bringing you have to know how the system works with the the markets the chains and so it's it's not a, a small thing to come here and, and a lot of the you know many of the the coolest brands are also very small and still sort of starting out and they don't have those budgets yeah, but exactly. if, if you have uh, an idea like that or you know interest in that you can always contact uh, business Finland. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they they help out, and also you can of course email me, and and I can you know help you, uh, you know with the contacts. Really nice. And then another question um, here: Could you recommend any sources or best practices for hygiene and safety brand message of a destination, specifically country destination? It's a trick. Hmm. I'm not sure if I understand completely. Yeah, uh, so I, I, I try to understand. So more like safety 
uh, when I guess is it when we like when we want to communicate the safety of a country, hmm. like safety as brand message. I don't know if it's if right. that ever came up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In this okay. situation where yeah, the poster is saying yes. So it's about communicating. Hmm. So for uh, instance, uh, yeah. For instance, communicating that Finland is a safe country to exactly. come to or yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's tricky. Yeah, because um, from perspective, it's kind of similar, right? So it's not. Yeah, there are not big differences. Yeah, I think that's more uh, maybe a question of, you know, in this situation right now, we don't really know uh, how safe any country is. Mm. Is yeah. my sort of spon spontaneous reaction. But uh, I guess when we start to, to have a more of a, a knowledge of that and a, a scope of the, the situation, then, you know, then, then we could start talking about that. Mm. But that that's always would be a, a tricky thing to sort of uh, to assume responsibility for something like that. Because, you know, traveling is always a, a person's own responsibility. Uh, you know, you're you're free to leave your country, you're free to travel in, you know, at least in our democratic Nordic countries, uh, but it's also your responsibility. So we could never, you know, say for sure that everything will be, you know, mm -hmm. safe and nothing will happen. Uh, but of course we could always talk about, you know, the measures that are in place to, mm -hmm. you know, that we're doing all we can and, and uh, you know, communicating on that. And, and, Probably the you know the nicest way would be to to make some something like a nice you know rather than uh, your your sort of usual um, authority communication uh, with a, just a press release or something you know I would try and you know maybe collaborate with a nice creative agency and come up with a with a fun campaign or something when you know, when we're a little bit further in this situation and we can, we can start, you know, getting a bit of distance and, uh, you know, it's still a little mm -hmm. bit too, too early to, to talk about all of that. But an interesting, interesting uh, thought. Yeah. And that's not a, like interesting idea that we could, instead of, you know, from the regulations perspective, explaining safety, could we, could we explain it from a more creative perspective? uh introducing the experience of safety rather than just um yeah the the sort of fact factual perspective and then we have another question um thank uh, tyra says thank you for answering my question that brings me to two other questions how has the staff dealt with only being able to practice their work digitally very interesting question. And the other one is, in the future, will you change the way you digitally practice? So mm, I repeat, yeah. that, how has the staff dealt with only being able to practice their work digitally? And will you uh, change in the future the way you digitally practice? Yeah. Um, yes, uh, so for us at the embassy, we are uh, around, you know, 20, a little bit more. Uh, a lot of us, uh, because the Swedish health authorities are recommending that people work from home if possible, and also the uh, foreign ministry is recommending that. So a lot of us, uh, some weeks ago already, uh, started working from home. Um, whereas then we have people who can't work from home. Um, their job requires them to be at the, at the premises. Um, so th there's been, a few few different uh, sort of approaches like that but for those who uh, can and are working from home uh, mostly it's been going quite well but uh, funnily enough because uh, we we weren't allowed to do distance work before um, uh, now that we are then people were sort of positively uh, inclined at first like yes now we're gonna have more flexibility and uh, you know I'll be able to uh, work from home and then now everyone is saying like I want to come back to work again I want to come to the office and I want to see my colleagues and you know I want to have meetings face to face and I want to see everyone so uh, and I can definitely recognize that um, it, I think what is suffering a little bit is this sort of team teamwork and you know brainstorming ideas and um, 
it's not quite as uh, as easy um, digitally. Maybe also because for some reason, I think maybe it's some safety safety thing. We we don't usually use pictures when we have our you know Skype meetings, so we just have people's voices, which of course uh, limits the um, communication because you read you know people's faces as well, what they're saying and what they're thinking and how they're reacting to what you're saying. <clears throat> so that's been a bit of a bit of a challenge, but all in all, I mean we're we're de doing doing well uh, on the digital work. Um, and I think, yeah, maybe um, we will probably change the way we work digitally uh, in the future because both we at the embassy and I know also, you know, people higher up, uh, even up to, uh, you know, ministers uh, have noticed that they can now have digital meetings. Uh, they don't always have to travel somewhere to meet uh, each other. And suddenly everyone is, is very comfortable with doing this. Um, and probably myself also, I will. In the future, uh, I won't travel to, to Helsinki for you know, so many meetings. I'll do them like this instead. Um, that's probably gonna be good for the planet. But then I'm also thinking that it, it gives a lot of uh, opportunities for country branding work uh, in the future as well. Uh, all these you know, uh, virtual tours of museums and these concerts that people are, are having uh, online. Why, why shouldn't we keep doing that uh, in the future? And also, of course, have physical meetings. But, uh, but I think that's a great opportunity to, you know, when this is over, let's not go back to exactly how it was, but let's, you know, take the best from this, this era to the new era again. Super interesting. Thank you for answering this question. Any other ones? I don't see any other questions uh, other than a lot of thank yous uh, for this great presentation. Cool. Well, thank you for listening. I'm, I'm very happy that you joined the, the seminar. And, and um, do drop me a line if you have thoughts, uh, questions. Um, and uh, take care of yourself. Yes, they say thank you. This is great and inspiring. So really, I think this is the yeah, perfect wrap up for this session. Uh, wonderful great feedback so thank you so much anna for uh for 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 joining and uh sharing this uh thank you for this great present presentation and stay safe anna maria says great to you <laughs> thank you guys and i think this is now the right moment then to wrap up so is there anything else Anna, would you want to mention no, so just thank you from me as well and, and uh, take care. Mm. Hope to meet you someday and uh, be able to give your presentation face to face as well. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day, all of you guys. You Thanks too. For in. Bye.